So uh, it is officially uh, the last day has passed for uh, the last day of the worst CEO I have ever seen in the game industry. And that's saying a lot. There is a reason to celebrate, and, and that's that's what we are celebrating today. And and everyone should be rejoicing. And I can't tell you <clears throat> how happy I am to see this person leave the game industry. There have been a few key people leaving the game industry, and this is one of them. Let's do the history of Bobby Kotick. So I got a bunch of articles prepped uh, for this so we can sort of... Some people to this day don't understand, Dave, why do you hate Bobby Kotick so much? You know, what did he ever do to you? Yeah, he never did anything to me personally, but I hate him as a CEO because of how he treated what I considered uh, what could have been a beautiful project, Warcraft 3 Reforged. But he also mistreated everyone at <laughs> Activision Blizzard and generally was a psychopath. There are people to this day who will bootlick anyone. Oh, well, he's got a bunch of money, so he must be smart. Well, it, no. Uh, I want to, if any, if anything you get out of this, I hope it's that uh, just because someone's rich doesn't mean they're good or smart or a genius or an auteur or that they know anything about what they're the CEO of. 90% of the time, the people who are the CEOs of these companies came from wealth, had connections that got them high up executive positions, and then just moved from executive position to executive position, never having any experience in the thing that they are overseeing never like ceos of car companies who have never been on the floor and worked on a car or engineered anything or know anything about it or manufacturing or whatever they just see the numbers on the page and if they want a big fat paycheck they fire a bunch of people to get some money and i'm going to demonstrate this right here this was the one of the this isn't the first shitty thing he's done, but this was the one that like caught my eye. Activision Blizzard reports new layoffs. CEO reportedly set to pocket enormous bonus payout. Now, if you uh, update 3.19.2021, <clears throat> this is 2021 we're talking about. Uh, the massive bonus he is res to receive is technically unrelated to the current layoffs and is instead an additional incentive to create shareholder value. How do you create shareholder value? Well, under capitalism, if you have a giant corporation, if you wanna create shareholder value, you just have to show that you're earning more money than you're losing. And every year you want that to go up. So your profit margin is higher and higher. Therefore the stock is higher and higher valued. That's it. So how do you do that as a CEO if you don't know jack shit about what you're making? You don't know or understand how games are made or have ever made a game or know anything about your employees. How do you do that? Well, guess what? You lay off a bunch of people towards the end of the year because all of the accounting for uh, that pay and stuff was done before. So even if you give them severance and stuff, that was all already accounted for years back. And now you have a huge profit margin. That's why there's been 10,000 layoffs in the game industry this year, which is, I'm pretty sure, a record. So 2023 has turned out to be one of the worst uh, years for game development, and Bobby Kotick is a piece of crap. The way to create value is to sell the future to pay for the present. Yes, exactly. Exactly. That's what they do, because they're CEOs, because they don't understand how good games are made or good anything are made. That's why the auto... Do you remember in 2008, I think it was? when Obama bailed out the car manufacturers, like all of the big car manufacturers were failing. Like they were just failing. And it was because the CEOs had just been extracting wealth out of their companies, flying on private jets everywhere and doing whatever and not innovating or hiring good engineers or motivating their employees. These CEOs were running their businesses into the ground and then the government fucking bails them all out. And that was after rounds and rounds of layoffs. So what are they defending? They're defending the CEO's ability to steal money from us because it's all wage theft when you think about it. All, anytime there's an increase in profit margin, whose labor provided that profit margin? Ours, <laughs> we, the workers, the people who made the things that people love and play with or need to use, but we don't get that back. We get no percentage, but the CEO gets a huge percentage. And in this case, 200 million. And then he did this trick where he took uh, no pay. He took like a meager salary, but then he got massive bonus checks. So 
Why else is Bobby Kotick a piece of shit? Well, as it turns out, he was incredibly abusive towards his staff and uh, threatened to kill someone such that it put him under investigation. So this was in 2006 that he threatened to kill someone, but it came up again because he pretended he didn't know about all the sexual harassment and assault at Activision. I can promise you that these CEOs, like they have cameras installed so that they can spy on you and shit. They know, they know what's going on at their company. So let's, let's go over their salary compensation. Uh, here's, here's Bobby Kotick. 30 million 2018, 30 million 2019, 154 million in 2020. Took a reasonable salary of 83,000 here and then 18,000 on 2022. Now, the reason he did this is because he got bigger bonus checks. And also keep in mind that in 2021, that's when he got the 200 million bonus check. <laughs> so his actual compensation was higher again, but he realized showing it in your salary looks bad all right so he's getting massive payouts the this is bullshit his actual executive compensation whether it be stocks or whatever hundreds of millions concerning the misogyny and and so forth at blizzard this was interesting to me because initially when they when uh morheim left and morheim we i don't know why morheim left i have no inside information on this this is pure speculation but the order of events was Warcraft 3 Reforged gets the shaft, and then he was gone a few months later. And I'm pretty sure it was related to Warcraft 3 Reforged getting the shaft. And if you don't know that story, I've I've already done a bunch of videos on it, but here's the short version of that. Uh, I was hired to work on Warcraft 3 Reforged. We were going to do the Warcraft 1 campaign in Warcraft 3 Reforged. So it would have been a whole new campaign, a retelling of the Warcraft 1 story with all of the updates and stuff that they did. Things from the movie mostly, by the way. And I had already designed some levels and stuff. And all of a sudden, I, I was invited personally. And then I brought in Tim Campbell. And uh, Tim Campbell brought in some other people who had previously worked on it. And we were going to like, it was going to be the, the classic, the original Warcraft 3 team working on Warcraft 1 retold in Warcraft 3 Reforged. If you're not a patron, <laughs> you can join there and see uh, the documentation from that event. That got the shaft. And in large part, I'm 90% sure it was a Bobby Kotick decision because not only was the entire classic team laid off in that same swoop, and this is all in the same year that he got the big fat 200 million bonus because he showed profit margin increasing, shareholder value. But yeah, then I got ghosted and... Tim got ghosted, like no one <laughs> knew what was going on. And no one responded to me when I asked. Uh, I demanded my final pay and I got it. And uh, that was it. And I never heard from them again. And then I find out later what happened was they laid off pretty much everyone involved uh, with uh, War 3 Reforged. And it came down to one first time level designer doing the entire Reforged campaign. So it's not his fault, 100% not his fault. He, had, was, he was given the work of six plus people to do in an extremely short time frame to revamp all those levels. Impossible, impossible under the circumstances. He did a good job. That's the kind of decisions you get handed down from CEOs. And here's, here's the thing. So the co-leaders, so, so Morheim's gone. The co-leaders, Jen O'Neill, I don't remember, do you remember that name? And Mikey Barra, they are co-leaders now of Blizzard, right? And the reason Jen O'Neill was a co-leader was to reduce the perception of misogyny that came out of the uh, accusations about Activision Blizzard's uh, like sexual assaults and like the, the Cosby Room, that, that, all that was going on at the same time. Jen O'Neill decides to leave the company because... Her pay is lower than Micah Barra's pay. What does Micah Barra do in response to that? Nothing. He doesn't do shit. He doesn't offer up part of his salary to make it even. He doesn't do anything. And Jen O'Neill uh, leaves. There's a big protest and that's it. They had the money. <laughs> Billions of dollars could easily have made her pay the same as his. But for whatever reason, Bobby Kodak was like, ah, women get paid less. Generally speaking, I think it, it is typically overstated how women get paid less. It does exist, and this is a prime example of why. 
because these CEOs actually are misogynists and they actually do F over women <laughs> just just for fun. And surprise, surprise, he knew about the sexual misconduct allegations for, for a long time. I, did, I didn't open this article, but it's it's not a shocker. CEOs always know what's going on at their company. They literally have spies installed at every level, at people they trust. There are little cronies who go around and like pick up all the rumors. Is anyone talking shit on Bobby? Oh, I'm going to fire someone. Yeah, I can't wait. That shit happens all the time. And then he had Francis Townsend was one of the former Bush administration cronies who came into Activision for a, for a payday because she'd done something for him legislatively for Activision in the past. He used her email, and, 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 and we really, I really want you guys to think about this. Think about this. He hires someone, it was high up there, it's like an executive level position. He just takes her email and writes a defense of himself using her name, using Francis Townsend's name, her email, which he had access to. Why? Because these are ghost positions. These people don't do anything at Activision Blizzard. They're just there to collect a paycheck because they did legislative actions for them. This is the political cronyism in the US. This is why you have these effed up massive executive payouts. And for people who clearly know jack shit, Francis Townsend doesn't know a damn thing about games, video games, doesn't give a shit. If you didn't think him threatening to end someone was enough, or you were like, oh, you know, maybe it didn't quite go down that way. I think it was recorded though. Uh, this demonstrates perfect, like entitlement to the max, total psychopath. Like just grab someone else's email that is under... And he thinks he owns this person because he gave them this ghost position and then uses it to defend himself and his company. Insane. We work at a company that truly values quality and fairness. These are Bobby Kotick's words. Do you think he honestly believes this? I wonder. He might be delusional. Most psychopaths are. Then <laughs> she had to step down because he did that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, she was the executive vice president for corporate affairs. Can you imagine? <laughs> You're the executive vice president for, for corporate. Oh my God. And, and you get your email used for this. Just madness. It's all about the money. The, these are great. These have been coming out since uh, his last day. But uh, people who worked at Activision now are talking the shit. <laughs> so Tracy Kennedy is like, Bobby, tell everyone about the random projects for Overwatch 1 you all would shove on us. The team would do overtime for them to get canceled and for months of Overwatch 2 dev to have been lost. Or how almost entire, she's clearly enraged as she writes, or how almost entire teams are turning over and citing you as the reason. Don't be shy. Just glorious. And then finally we get to some good news. Uh, Microsoft announces Xbox leadership changes as Activision's Bobby Kotick departs. Yay! Finally, he's going to be gone. Now, I don't know... Okay, in terms of Mike Ibarra, I don't know him personally. I've heard positive things about him, but in terms of him taking action to defend his employees, I've heard very negative things about him. Like, he did not stand up for anyone. He didn't stand up for Jen O'Neill. He didn't share his money with her or do anything to make things right. He didn't lift a damn finger. I don't yet trust Michael Barr until I see him stand up for, for Blizzard's best interests. So everyone's under Matt Booty, which is quite a name. I know nothing about him, but uh, he is the Microsoft game content and studio president. So M Matt Booty will be checking things out. We'll see what he does. I know that Microsoft policy has been 90% hands off. Uh, they did not touch studios like In Exile, and when I asked about how Microsoft was treating them, I had very positive responses from people. All right, the long and short of it is the future is uncertain. We don't know what's going to come out of this. We don't know how these people behave or, or what they do. Or maybe Metzen came back on his own because Microsoft said, hey, Bobby's going to be gone. <laughs> Will you come back? I think that's exactly what happened, but hard to say. What was the long and short of the... Uh, the culture of harassment and and he blames unions for company problems. <laughs> they don't have a union. They don't have a union. There's no union. Raven Software formed a union and they all got the axe. 
Um, all right. Um, <clears throat> so he was denying the culture of harassment, and and here's the here's the kicker. Um, breast milk stolen that was i'll never understand how that happened clearly things had gone too far at this fucking company and no one was doing shit about it not kodak not ibarra nobody not jab yeah it was out of control and it goes back to blizzard's original days like things got overlooked that shouldn't have been overlooked point is there was a payout and no one will be prosecuted as a result because it was settled out of basically out of a uh, jury trial so without the jury trial it's settled out of court I don't I think because it was a class action, none of these people can then file additional stuff. I am hoping that some people stayed out of the class action in order to sue for additional stuff, because I would be very curious to see the details of how that works out. And it would also provide more information on what exactly was going on. And here it is. Activision Blizzard CEO Bobby Kodak could walk away with more than 500 million after the Microsoft deal. And he will. So he's probably already got that check. It was part of the compensation package, his golden parachute on his way out. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. Now that all that's explained away, <laughs> anyone want to defend Bobby Kodak? <laughs> Nobody wants to defend Bobby Kodak. That's all I have, honestly. I just wanted to celebrate once more <laughs> the end of Kotick's reign.